Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fox Sports on the Road. I'm your host, Michael Cohen. Today, the U.S. men's national team is trying to get to the quarterfinals of the World Cup for the first time since 2002. And this is the fifth time the US, since the U.S. first participated in the World Cup that they have qualified for the round of 16. Joining us today to break this all down and to get you everything you need to know about the U.S. men's soccer team, the World Cup, is Jeff Reuter of The Athletic. Jeff, welcome aboard. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome, man. So uh, before we get into talking about this matchup, just tell me a little bit more about yourself and your and your coverage of uh, of soccer. You know, where did this passion start for you? Yeah, it actually started out in the bleachers, uh, if you believe it, of a second division soccer game. So I, I grew up following the sport. My aunt was a goalkeeper in Minnesota at the same time that Brian Escurry was coming up through the ranks in high school. Uh, there are, you know, these, these family generational stories now, now it's becoming generational, I guess, uh, where there'd be club soccer shootouts at the end to determine the state title. And Brianna Scurry would make two saves and my aunt would make one. And that's always how the game would end is that, you know, it's just, you know, the best goalkeeper in the world ended up beating her on the day. So I, I grew up with this. I watched the 99ers. I watched, woke up in the middle of the night to watch 2002 that run to the quarterfinal, what have you. Um, and then I, you know, was a fan of the, the second division of Minnesota United when they're in the old NASL that the New York Cosmos used to to be in and uh you know my brother and I were in the crowd some guy heard us talking asked if I wanted to hop on his podcast because he needed a stopgap host until he could find a real replacement on his show I ended up just taking over that as the the second host I started writing about it freelancing the Guardian 442 ESPN uh Sky Sports and Major League Soccer's website and then the Athletic starts covering soccer in 2018 I start as a freelancer I get hired on full-time April 2019 and uh now here I am in my fourth year of the staff role covering awesome, the world man. cup it's a crazy so, progression it really is it, it, it is it, it, it's wild but you know that's how these things go you never you never know how it starts and all of a sudden you just keep rolling right right exactly yeah and and there's there's something that's just so gratifying about the fact that it's not i wasn't assigned this beat right this isn't a, a case where i wanted to cover the nfl and i guess i got to cover the soccer desk which it happens so often in this industry unfortunately um you know that wasn't that wasn't the case whatsoever for me so not a much not much sleep these days i haven't had a day off since september but this is why we do it we love it this is the this is the youngest team this is the youngest starting lineup that the US has fielded in the four, in the World Cup um and the fourth ever that they've had mm -hmm. what does that what kind of advantage does that give a team like this because sometimes the old saying is you don't know what you don't know and sometimes that could be a benefit to a team that is as young and aggressive as this one Absolutely. I mean, this is a generation of player that grew up playing FIFA, the video game, right? They grew up watching the Champions League on all of the various broadcast homes that it's had over the last 10, 15 years in the States. And so as a result, th this is the stage they've been craving. They haven't been growing up saying it'd be really nice to play in front of 4,000 fans in a neutral venue in Germany against Japan, right? Which was the case in the September qualifier or in the September friendly window, which is when they looked so poor and everyone was starting to wonder, okay, is this team even going to get out of the group in the first place? Which, by the way, was always a valid question to ask, mm. given the strength of Iran, the the passion of Wales, you know, despite their lack of quality. Um, but I think that, you know, with that youth comes one, you're fearless as you're alluding to, right? Like it's, it's, it's a stage that it's not going to overwhelm you because you're not going to let it. Um, but two, also there are actual sporting advantages to it. Uh, U S men's players are usually lauded for being tireless, hardworking grindstone runners of players, even if they're technically deficient in some cases, that's been the old stereotype since those nineties and two thousands teams. And that still holds true with this batch. But the difference is, they're much younger. They're able to regenerate. They're able to recover. You know, Christian Pulisic coming off of a pelvic contusion, Josh Sargent with an ankle. Both of them look like they might be able to play a role on, you know, on this game against Holland. Um, Pulisic more likely than Sargent, admittedly, as of uh, this time. But I, I think that you look at it overall and... Uh, you know, there are still some veterans there who are able to look and say, this is my big moment. This is the highlight of my career, like a Tim Ream figure, for example, who didn't feature in that 2014 World Cup roster, despite being a part of the program already at that point. Um, but I think that that youthfulness has really helped them take on this challenge and embrace it rather than maybe fully understand the pressure that they're under in the moment. The moment where he gets the what would end up being the game winning goal, obviously all of Twitter just exploded, social media exploded, obviously. Yeah. Um, and to do that while also getting injured, I think just adds to his myth mytho mythos in a lot of ways. You agree? Yeah. 
Yeah, I would agree. So I, I think that in the moment, it's really unfortunate. You want a player to be able to have that knee slide in the corner like Landon Donovan did against Algeria in 2010. You want them to be able to savor the moment where they were able to put together such an impressive individual effort that helps the whole team. But I think you're right. I think that there's something quintessentially American sports about, you know, gave his body up for the rest of the game just to make sure that this team got out of the group stage. Jordan flew game, uh, Willis Reed walking back on in crutches, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, these, these moments live on in the sports consciousness longer um than just about anything players coming through adversity risking injury all of that paul pierce on the wheelchair is something that i've seen gift a lot since politics injury right <laughs> so uh you know i think that it it will in a weird way that sort of moment needed to happen for american soccer's reputation especially on the men's side i think that most casual american sports fans know that they need to respect the u.s women's national team at this point that they're the best at what they do in the world and have been for 25 years now i, I think that the, the the flip side of it though is that the men's side you know men's soccer still gets an unfair reputation for being uh, for a bunch of pretty boys who are soft and i don't think a lot of people casual sports fans realize how tough this sport is how much grit is required to be good at this sport how much determination how much physical labor how much mental focus during immense physical distress this sport requires and it's it's to a point now where if, if you are making the same lazy jokes you're making 25 years ago you missed the bandwagon and so i think having a player who not just scored but scored and left his body on the line and was able to limp through the rest of the half for tactical purposes so burhalter didn't have to use a substitution window in a world cup to help his team even more um that's something that I think is going to be a statement and something that really resonated with casual American sports fans as well as the soccer crowd. Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me of when uh, Derek Jeter went flying into the stands, trying yeah. to foul ball, and he smashes it. it into the seats. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, same energy, exactly. You, you want to see that because you want to believe that if you were in that situation, you would leave it all out there like a Derek Jeter, like a Willis Reed, like mm-hmm. a Christian Pulisic. Like everyone wants to imagine they would be that guy, and it makes it a little easier for cheer to a team when they play to a level of effort that everyone on their sofa wishes they could hit.